today is all about slimes, molds, puddings, sludges, tars, jello shots, globsters, hungry flesh, hungry fog, immortal ichor, ectoplasm, bog scum, blight, malaise, goose, muck amoebas, snot, putty, augers, marmalades, gummy bears, mooses, and of course, the grand poopa of them all, the gelatinous cube. Today, let's talk about oozes. I'm all about playing monsters as characters in pretty much any RPG setting, and you don't get much more iconic D&D than goos, slimes, and jellies. There's nothing worse than walking around late at night and stepping on something that goes swish. I'm looking at you, cat. So if you're in the mood to slam your pseudopod around in the dark, engulf your enemies, and get your jiggle on, then you're in luck. Today, we're going to talk about slime. Throughout the different monster manuals, there are a bunch of different slimes to choose from. And much like using an undead template, note to self, make undead video, there are some pretty messed up things to look at when using the ooze traits as your base for a character. First off, oozes are equipped with a 60-foot blind sense, immunity to gaze and visual illusions, mostly because they don't have any eyes, but they also have full immunity to poison, sleep, paralysis, polymorph, oh yeah, and stuns. I think the first thing a good adventurer learns about goos and oozes, slimes and molds, is don't go near them. The second thing they learn is probably, oh god, it's made of acid, followed by darkness, and then the gentle sound of dice rolling as they make a new character. Did I mention that they have immunity to flanking and sneak attack damage? Because that's pretty awesome. Well, it sounds like this would be pretty overpowered for a build for any melee class character, but depending on what kind of sticky substance you've decided to compile your blobular form from, you may be giving yourself some pretty mean handicaps. You know, like, if you want to wear clothes or boots or use weapons or talk in a normal manner that doesn't end up sounding like goblins drowning in jello. <laughs> Stat-wise, everything that isn't strength or constitution is a dump stat. This is one of those weird situations where I would actually suggest either playing a monster sat block or just doing something really creative with the numbers. I'm thinking like a plus two to strength and constitution and a minus four to everything else. This sounds a little crazy, but with good rolls and the right gear, you can have a pretty functional dinner party. The negative four sounds like a lot, but you really do have a lot going on for you from the ooze traits. In my mind, I'd like to think that after all these years of adventurers throwing their gear, magical items, body parts, and sometimes friends into these deadly dinner delights, that one of them must have had some magical item that gave them a plus two bonus to intelligence. So at the basic level, you could just use the monster stat block and just start the game with a plus two intelligence item, and that would take care of you, you know, not being able to think. It's not like you're going to need much of anything else. Anything that isn't metal or stone is just going to get dissolved, so good luck being a ranger. Unless you really want a skeletal bear, as you're familiar. Note to self, make skeletal bear. Beyond that, you're set up to be really good at melee or at tanking. You and your DM have to discuss what slots you have. That actually sounds worse now that I've said it. Phrasing. And what I mean is that your body basically counts as bag space more than having equipment slots. You possess a natural attack of a d6 with a d6 of your elemental damage based on what goo you are. And you'll have to talk to your DM about whether or not you grappling someone counts as an engulfing attack. I would say it should but that would just be another d6 of damage uh, on each round, which could be awesome, or you could, you know, level that as you level up. Did I mention that if you use the black pudding as the basis for your jello salad of a character, you basically become Venom? Seriously, he devours everything he touches. He has spider climb, and he can split into smaller versions of himself. I'm gonna name you Carnage. Nah, you're not my real dad. And I know this sounds insane, but but do it. Make Venom. You, you can't wear armor, but who cares? You split, you split, and you both have half of your HP. You can just reconstitute all your clones at the end of a long rest and just stay away from fire and, you know, toe for grace. So my favorite thing about this is actually trying to pass in the human world with your crappy stats and your lack of fleshy bits. You're going to have to get really creative with, with your world interactions. I've got a plan of saving the bones of those you devour and using them to make a human-shaped lattice structure vehicle skeleton puppet. I wonder if that counts as necromancy. But seriously, talk to your DM about using your armor and bones to build yourself a body. This is a really dark character build, but I think it has a lot of really fun, crazy potential. I know there have been some discussions online, and there are some third-party works out there right now with a lot of variants and options for using oozes as a base race. Worst case, you could live in a glass bottle and hire a kobold to carry you around and throw you at your enemies. You were gone too, too soon, Spurt, but there will always be another kobold. And if you're really in dire straits, you could always just hang out behind the group and let them throw all their misused armor and crappy gear inside of you, and you can just carry it around like a giant bag of holding that also occasionally eats party members that are sleeping and annoying. So as always, let me know how your builds go, and if you have any cool ideas or unique uh, gelatinous objects, maybe spheres or some kind of cylinder that you would like to use for a character, let me know. I'd, I'd really love to see how you guys build that out, and uh, as always, keep your dice on the table.